All right. So um, what we're going to start with here is looking at some of the differences between Rhino Render and Maxwell Render and some of the significant, uh, I guess, uh, developmental moves that you need to make in a model in order to make one work. Um, so this is a building that, for those of you who took my previous class you're familiar with, it's just a tower that we made with Grasshopper. Um, but what I want to show you is a little bit about the difference of scale of a building and, and how that is uh, very you know, critical for how you develop a render, particularly in Maxwell. And then what the differences are between lighting um, elements in Rhino Render versus Maxwell. And, and I guess, you know, the different scales that you need to uh, consider. Okay, so the, take this as your sort of uh, primer of what the rest of the semester is going to entail and the kinds of conversations that we're going to be having. Um, so it's not something that you need to follow along with. Uh, I just want you to, to really focus and listen and, and, and download the, the ideas into your mind. Okay, so you'll find that I do that pretty frequently. I'll... I'll have you just kind of focus on an idea rather than trying to figure out the technology. And I guess this could potentially be uh, lesson number two, right? Like my, I have a few really big lessons that I teach every semester. And uh, the, the second of those is um, you need to learn everything three times. The first time you learn it, you need to just focus on the ideas, right? Like, like what is happening? What am I learning? Why am I learning it? You know, why is this valuable? The second time, you need to focus on, you know, what it is you have to do, right? So, you know, what, what is that tool? What does that tool do? Where do I find that tool? And then the third time you learn it, you need to figure out how you can use it to achieve your own goals. So that's, that's lesson number two is make sure that you experience these lessons three times, which is why it's valuable that we record these because you can watch me here. You can go back and, and view it later or I can recap it for you and that's when you focus on the tools, and then you can go back in and refer to it when you're developing your own projects. So those are those three elements. So anyway, and you'll hear that a few times this semester. So um, <clears throat> this model uh, is full scale, so it's really, really tall. If I measure the distance of how tall it is here, DIST, I'm gonna pick a point kind of near the bottom. If I have such a thing as a grid or a bow snap, point go from there to there 400 feet tall okay not terribly tall but tall um, <clears throat> so when I go in to render this thing it's going to be a physically based element and so what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to make a little copy of this thing let me group it alt there we go and this one I'm going to pick an origin point Go to there, and I'm going to make this thing just 24 inches tall. There we go. Itty bitty guy, right? So one of them is a full size building. The other one down here, this little this little dude down there, uh, that's our model, right? In in class, so it's about yay tall. Okay. So um, <clears throat> let's take a look at uh, the model element first. Okay. I'm not being smart, I didn't use zoom select. Um, so this is our, our tiny little one. Let's look at it with Rhino Render first, okay? Rhino Render, the, the lights and stuff that you use, we're not gonna talk about materials yet. The lights and stuff that you use though are going to be lights that are modeled in the, um, in the Rhino environment. So it's like a, a point light source or a, 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 a cone light source, like a spotlight. And those you're going to find, and I always forget where these are because um, I never use them. Render tools, there you go, um, right here. So um, you can create a point light, which is kind of like a sun, you know, or like an orb glowing in all directions, spotlight. You can do directional lights, linear lights, all that stuff. But let's just look at it with a spotlight for now, okay? Because a spotlight is going to be something like you would produce, you know, in, in, in a, a studio environment, right, when you're photographing your model. And so this is going to um, project, whoa, that's a really long point light. Hang on. Let me do this from a different view. Oops. Ooh, that ain't going to do it. Let's do. Go, something like that. Go to the top view. 
something like that. Move it into place. Pick it up a little bit. Turn it down. Make sure it's kind of looking at it. So move that. There we go. So we have a light that's facing our little mini model. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know how strong that is, but I'll just try it out. So um, Rhino Render is actually really simple. When you're working with Rhino Render, make sure that you set it to render with Rhino Render. And then um, the cool thing about this when you're testing lighting conditions is you can set a few of these up just to kind of get a, a very quick sense of what it looks like. Um, but you just go to um, render properties and this is the standard, this is in your basically your file properties and it's embedded into all the settings for the Rhino file which showed up on the other screen. Um, <clears throat> so Rhino render here is is very simplistic compared to Maxwell. So you basically just have resolution, you can change the background color, you can change ambient lighting. Um, you guys know what ambient lighting is? Okay. In case you don't know, um, ambient lighting is like all the diffuse glow that's happening around the room, right? So it's like light that's bouncing from the general environment, basically. Um, so, uh, and then you can set environment maps or solid color backgrounds. Um, so what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna set a solid color. Okay, I'm going to make it uh, white, and then, yeah, that should probably be fine. I don't really care about the resolution because I'm just doing draft renders here. Say okay. Um, so when I go to render and then I click on render, it's going to run for a little bit, and there it is. Okay, I didn't do any materials on it or anything right now. Um, but that just sets it on a white background, nothing special, nothing going on. Um, if What is that? Um, I, I lost my train of thought. Right, yeah, backgrounds. Okay, so um, so I just set it to a plain, you know, white background, but it doesn't have any environment around it. Um, let me show you real quick again. Um, under... This thing doesn't have a zoom, does it? I never use this, so. Forget it. I'll just copy it. There we go, JPEG. Okay, not very high quality. But um, what I wanted to point out is that it's really like the, the, the source light that I put on that thing is the only light that's illuminating this space, okay? As opposed to something like Rhino Re or Maxwell Render, which is going to produce something that is a little bit more um, deep, I guess. So let's go uh, back to the Maxwell Render environment, and I need to pull up my tools again. Show all toolbars. They didn't show. Why didn't they show? Where'd they go? Oh well, I know where I'm going. I'll fix this later. So Maxwell, I'm going to go to the uh, scene editor. I already have a bunch of materials on it, um, but they weren't, they're not they Maxwell materials, not the Rhino materials. So you're going to see some of the materials render out here. But anyway, um, the settings, I set it to physical sky. It's just using the sun. I don't think we really changed anything in this file. But when I go to render and I hit render, it's going to take a second. So... Bear with me here. Let me pause for a bit because this is going to take a sec. I'll just resume so that we can just talk about it. So um, you'll kind of notice that all the environment settings that came through with Maxwell are on. Um, and there really isn't a spotlight on this thing. So even at the small scale, it still kind of looks like a big thing, you know? So, um, you know, sometimes you can use that to help manage your file and keep file sizes down and stuff like that, but frequently you just want to use the right scale for the right thing. Um, but the reason I'm bringing all this up is, you know, what are you doing with your model, 
right? So we're going to have discussions about how we can communicate the quality of a building in its rightful place, right, in an environment, um, and, and what that's going to look like. So, uh, well, I'm going to stop the video that we're working on here. Um, and I guess the next video we're going to move into, you know, looking at those environments and what the differences are.